Heat pumps have a problem. It's not the difference between electricity and gas prices causing high running costs. It's not the elevated noise levels which might keep you awake at night. Nor is it the lower flow temperatures which might struggle to keep you warm on a cold winter's day. The problem with heat pumps is actually us, or rather our perception of them and how we as a society process change. Give me a few minutes to explain. As humans, we are hardwired to resist change, and this is important. If this wasn't the case, we would struggle to prioritize the things which really matter. To create heat, we are used to burning things. It's what we've always done in different forms across generations, whether that be coal, wood, or gas. But heat pumps work differently. They extract heat, compressing it and moving it to where it's needed. With such a departure from what we're used to, it's natural to have doubts. When you hear of values such as 400% efficiency, having a heat output four times higher than the energy input, surely that breaks the laws of thermodynamics. When something sounds too good to be true, it usually is, so you'd be forgiven for dropping all your research at that point. It just doesn't sound right, does it? What we're talking about here is clever engineering. It's possible because they don't create heat, they move it, extracting it from the outside air, warming up your radiators and thus your house. Can they work below zero degrees C? As chilly as it feels at those kind of temperatures, there's plenty of energy out there. Absolute zero is actually zero degrees Kelvin, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius. There's plenty of evidence across the world that they do work perfectly well in temperatures around minus 20 and minus 30 degrees Celsius. So what about those lower flow temperatures? It leads to this perception of them being less effective, particularly in those really cold conditions. But the truth is, many of the modern heat pumps being installed right now are capable of temperatures of 70 degrees C or more. They're just designed to modulate down to maximise efficiency. And as ever, correct system sizing is crucial, and a good installer can help get that right. So what about that installation process? You might be looking at new pipework, radiator changes, cylinder upgrades. It all sounds a bit scary and quite time consuming. In fact, a typical install takes around about four days, but it varies quite dramatically from property to property. One with a combi boiler would almost certainly require the introduction of a new cylinder, which may have additional complications which extend things further. But on the plus side, you do have new services like HeatGeek's Zero Disrupt and Octopus's Turbo install, which streamlines the process far more than ever before, where eligible. HeatGeek's Zero Disrupt service works on the principle of reusing as much of the existing infrastructure as possible, whereas turbo installs from Octopus specify a higher flow temperature, closer to that of a gas boiler, again reducing the need for so many modifications. Both reduce the upfront capital investment quite heavily. Along with the boiler upgrade scheme, things can become quite affordable, with a small compromise, of course, of some efficiency. Here's what surprised me the most when I got my heat pump. It was actually the comfort levels. It maintains a stable temperature throughout the day, every day. The gas mindset was very much a case of when and where is the temperature needed. TRVs and thermostat tweaks were essential to reducing that waste. When it's on, it can very easily overshoot the target temperature, but when it's off on a cold day, it can quickly cool down. Heat pumps operate for a greater proportion of the day, with the outcome being stability and predictability. We've all heard horror stories of noisy heat pumps, and those can really put off anyone who might otherwise consider one. But those examples are typically from defective products or highly flawed installations, far from the norm. Like gas boilers, the sound can vary depending on model and demand. But in both my experience and looking through the spec sheets, they are typically only marginally louder than the equivalent gas boiler. I have a Cozy 6 and I can barely hear when it comes on from inside the house. And admittedly, my home is well insulated, but it's difficult to imagine it making the kind of sound that would keep yourself or neighbours awake, as some would have you believe. On to the big question, running costs. A single unit of gas would cost you 6.29 pence, whereas a single unit of electricity would cost you 26.35 pence. That's an offset factor of nearly 4.2. On first glance, there's no denying that's a mountain to climb. 
But look closer, it will soon become apparent that you don't need a seasonal coefficient of performance of 4.2 to achieve a saving. Firstly, gas boilers are not 100% efficient. They are more like 90% at best in real world conditions. Next, unless you rely on gas for cooking, there is genuine money to be saved from the standing charge should you wish to disconnect from gas entirely. That's 34 pence a day which adds up to just over £124 annually. And that's before you use any energy. Then there are solar and batteries, allowing you to use the energy you generate for yourself on heating and hot water. But the biggest advantage is when combined with smart tariffs. If you have a smart meter, you needn't pay the rate I mentioned earlier. Some off-peak tariffs can be as cheap as 7 pence per unit, and that's close to the gas costs. Back to all this together, and you could be on to a winner. What about durability and maintenance? Warranty timeframes of heat pumps do vary quite drastically, much like gas boilers. But let's take a direct comparison between the two offerings from Valent, the Aerotherm Plus heat pump versus the Ecotech gas boiler. Both of those offer seven years of warranty. Let's take a couple of slightly more budget friendly options. On the heat pump side, you've got the Cozy series from Octopus. And on the gas boiler side, you've got the Baxi 400 series. The cozy heat pumps have a warranty period of 8 years versus the 5 years offered on the Baxi 400 gas boiler. One heat pump with a standout warranty length is offered by Aera. It's a whopping 15 years in its duration. It's fair to say heat pumps are at the very least on par with gas boilers in this regard. A clear sign of confidence they can be equally as durable if not more so. Much like gas boilers it's still recommended to get a heat pump serviced annually. Servicing costs as little as £9 a month, or £108 annually from Octopus. In comparison, servicing a gas boiler is typically in the £60 to £80 range, depending on who carries out the work. So it's a little higher, but not drastically so. There's a good chance that gap might continue to close as well, as heat pumps gain some popularity. So to conclude, heat pumps can provide advantageous running costs and superior comfort levels but they require a different mindset to get the most from them. If you can embrace those differences, making them work for you rather than against you, you might just find yourself very happy indeed with a heat pump. So what are your thoughts? Let me know if you have a heat pump. If so, are you satisfied with the comfort levels and are you saving money? If not, what's holding you back and would you ever consider one? If you are considering the purchase of a heat pump, I have a referral code for £100 off any installation. In addition, I have a link for £50 bill credit when joining Octopus as an energy supplier. They provide many smart tariff options with cheap off-peak rates. Both of these help support the channel. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. If so, consider subscribing and check out more of my content over here.